I just feel like I'm at home here. Um, you know, from Seattle, uh, this is a big, big city. It's a big metropolitan city. Uh, I feel kind of claustrophobic when I'm in New York or um, some of the bigger American towns. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the lilt. I don't know if it's the pubs on the corner. I, I just feel at home here and um, never have felt more at home than with the staff here at um, JDIF. I mean, it's just been, you know, from Grania to Aslan to all you guys, it's been an amazing experience so far. I was actually going to a commercial job in California. I was on a jet and um, reading a book called Mountain in the Clouds, which was a, a tome for wild salmon in the Pacific Northwest, where I'm from, in the States. And I ran across a name. I realized this name in the book was a, the father of one of a very close friend of mine. And I knew he was dying of cancer. And I knew that he, his name was Russ Bush. He had um, not very long to live, and he'd spent 40 years of his life trying to remove these two dams out of the Elwha River in my home state of Washington. Um, he's, he represented the tribe, the Elwha River tribe. Um, and uh, that year, in 2011, those dams were scheduled to come out, and I knew he was going to have a chance to see them with his own eyes. So uh, I got home from this trip, and I immediately started just interviewing him on my own um, without even thinking about where the doc was going to go from there. That was the impetus. As an indie filmmaker, you, you know, invariably run into financial difficulties, which are hard to overcome. Uh, those are the first things. We, we had a successful Kickstarter campaign and a really fantastic um, benefactor who became, came on as an investor, uh, one single investor. And um, it, it happened in incremental parts throughout the production. So we had a bit of that stress. Um, Probably the, the most difficult thing, though, for me in terms of production work was dealing with the political issues inside of the film. We talk about um, the salmon runs that are gone, and we talk about the few that remain, most specifically in Alaska, where there's tens of millions of sam wild salmon that come back every year still. And right now, um, there is a multinational corporation that wants to build North America's largest open pit copper mine at the headwaters of the last largest wild salmon run on earth. And for me to try to get folks who were part of the mining group or pro-mining was a difficult challenge. And in fact, I, I reached out many times and um, wasn't able to get them on board, unfortunately. Um, so we had to construct a story and a narrative around that um, without having that side of the, of the tale. We're fortunate in that the subject matter inside of this story is around a very sacred animal. Uh, it's, it is definitely so here in Ireland. Um, in fact, we made a very specific nod to the Salmon of Wisdom in, in Irish mythology uh, as the voice of the, the fabled salmon in our story. Um, so far, the audiences we've, we've gone to have been in Ireland, Alaska, the Pacific Northwest, and um, our North American premiere in Southern California, where there's a lot of retired folks from those areas. All of them had some sort of a um, connection, an emotional connection to wild salmon as, a, as an icon, as a sustainable food source, and as something that feeds the entire environment that uh, it comes back to when it comes to spawn. So we've had really incredible reactions to the film. I spent a good deal of time um, drafting out how I wanted this film to look, sound, and feel, and um, I knew that we were going to have a documentary that was a performative documentary that, that relied a lot on um, kind of the images in my mind and, and bringing those out in a, a stylistic way. So um, having a limited budget, I, I, I tried to get the best humans that I could that were willing to work within the parameters of our budget. Um, one most notably is Ray Troll, who's a famous Alaskan artist. His are the, um, the drawings that you see throughout the picture that were then animated by another wonderfully talented animator named Todd Soliday. Um, every single person that worked on this film did so for the passion of the project. And we uh, decided we wanted a very poetic, elegant, and expansive look to the film. And um, we used our budget accordingly.